Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Astrological Intentions. I am your host, Alex Reevy, along with the... What? Gerang gal herself, Sandy Reevy. <laughs> Was that made up on the spot? Yes. And <laughs> You're getting good. It is episode 260, July 17th. Get, let's get right into it in the transits. We have today Mercury square Jupiter. What's the focus? And new moon in Cancer. A rebirth of trust. Then Sandy's favorite day, Thursday, July 20th, sun trying Neptune retrograde. Gain from intuitive hits. And Mars opposing Saturn retrograde. Go. Stop. Friday, July 21st, sun opposing Pluto retrograde. Oppenheimer, the movie. And Saturday, Saturday, July 22nd, Venus stations retrograde. Retracing. And sun ingress Leo. Leo's birthday, what a party. And to end the week with Sunday, July 23rd, Mercury square Uranus retrograde. Scattered. Then in talisman time, Sandy has finished up three with one special upcoming. And on the horizon, you won't want to miss our Venus Star Point Talisman Workshop and our last call for Greece Retreat. And in our house, Sandy and I have brought home one of our favorite Balinese meals to share. <laughs> and that is Mi Garang. So stay tuned for this episode of Astrological Intentions. I say go do you. Now travel far, share your stories and earn your scars, it's you. Say you are the one you will answer to when this life is done. Don't waste a minute, jump in the river, wash yourself clean so you can deliver you. Hello, Gorain gal. Mia Gorain, Nase Gorain. Big favorite uh, traditional dish. Especially Indonesian it, or Balinese, actually. For mostly for breakfast, I had it every single breakfast. It is crazy every single day. to have noodles and vegetables and all of that for breakfast. Yeah. And with an egg on top. So Definitely there you not go. an American meal for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go direct to all of you listeners. Again, thank you so much for your feedback. It is our soul food. So keep it coming. This one is from Cindy. She says, Sandy. Your quarterly reviews, she has one of those subscriptions. Mm -hmm. She says, your quarterly review of my next forecasted few months. Wow. The last reading was so spot on. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just got together again for another look at the next three months. Right. So let's I think see. that's a that's a great cadence too, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like, okay, I've got it all forecasted in the in for this quarter, and then Let's see how, then, how, how, that, how let's see it how it went, yeah. <laughs> and then also let's see what's upcoming. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any availabilities on in quarterly? I do, I okay. do. Yeah, All right. maybe well, one or two. Yeah, I will add the link for anyone that wants to join either quarterly or annual readings. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move into the transits. We have Monday, July seventeenth again today. Mercury square Jupiter. So this is a square, but this is, you know, the Mercury, the planet that likes to think and communicate is squaring up with Jupiter. And so there may be too many ideas or projects and where it can be confusing. You don't know which step to take first. So, you know, what's the focus whole, you know, this focus is um, and, and we start the day this way. This is at by 8 a.m. in the morning. So we might have too many things on our plate on a Monday morning today, right? And mm -hmm. go, okay, we might have to wait till uh, a little bit at the at the afternoon time when we get into the new moon. Because we'll go into a new moon and that might be a time to sit with those projects or thoughts or decisions that you have to make. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There just might be too much to go on the square just says it makes you want to do something but again if there's too many parts of the puzzle you may need to decipher it a little bit and take a longer look at it before you point well, yeah. to point yeah, to or something. have a priority or have a plan you know yeah. having that focus of what is next i like that yeah. so same day today new moon in cancer yeah, this is uh, 25 degrees of Cancer, and this is at 1.32 p.m. Uh, this is Central Time, Chicago. And we got the new moon in Cancer. The moon rules Cancer, so yay, moon. 
Uh, Happy moon. She likes to be here. And really interesting, this new moon is when obviously the moon and the sun are together in the sky. And here at this this uh, last five degrees, uh, four degrees of Cancer, making a sextile to Uranus. So this is about, you know, uptick of information. Uh, it's making a trine to Neptune about what are the the insights? What are the, mm-hmm. the magical intuitive hits you can get? Uh, and then it's, then it's squaring Pluto, or excuse me, it's opposing Pluto, which really has this um, really strong obsessive energy point. So, you know, to have a rebu- rebirth or reburst, I almost said, which mm-hmm. could be that a reburst of trust in what the plan is to feel protected because it's also in cancer. Yep. Right. Yep. So, yeah. Happy moon. Happy moon there. Okay. So let's move on to your favorite day, Thursday, July 20th, Sun Trine Neptune Retrograde. Now, when I say it's my favorite day, it's my favorite day because of this aspect. There's two aspects coming in this day. It's like this one is my favorite and the second one is probably my least favorite. Okay. So when I was like picking my favorite day of the month, it was, uh, I want this day, but we got a little bit of a you know, kind of a flipping of the coin by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But yes, this first part with the sun making a trine to Neptune, really gain intuitive hits here, feel good, join together. You know, it's kind of like, you know, circling up in the kumbaya circle, right? With all your friends, you're sipping a little, you're passing the stories, you're, you're just kind of going in this rhythm of feeling together in togetherness. Mm -hmm. Um, So I like this. Um, um, a f- you know, cre- fluidity of a creativity of joining, joining together. Okay. And same day, Mars opposing Saturn retrograde. This is the not so favorite part of the day. Right. This is the, the Mars trying to move and Saturn is trying to stop. Mm-hmm. Now, Saturn's retrograde here. So Saturn doesn't have... I mean, he's a he's a superior planet over over the Mars. Um, Mars doesn't have a ton of strength uh, in the in the sign he's in. He's in Virgo right now, but Saturn doesn't have a ton of strength either. Is a retrograde in Pisces, so mm. you know you have to move through the process here. You just have to move through the program, the process of the plan that you emotionally supports you. What supports you? What is your dream? Um, you know, take your precious time here because Saturn is saying, no hurry, man, you know, figure things out. Mars is in Virgo going, what's my next step? I got to work on the next thing. Let's go. Let's, let's, Mm -hmm. let's, let's let's push this in, push this forward. When Saturn's going, no, you don't, Hmm. you know, take a breath here. Um, you know, you know, the opposition is really looking at somebody uh, on the other side. It's like a tug of war. Yeah. It's it's looking at the opposing force. Right. When one gains, the other loses. Yeah. So it's like, again, the idea here is always to come to the center, come to a compromise, come to the, an agreement in the middle. Um, But, you know, we have to think about, and this is going to last two days. You know, if this is the 20th, this is Thursday, the 20th of this July. It could be coming in on the 19th. It could be coming and lasting till the 21st. There mm-hmm. is this, there's tension, let's just say. There's tension of what you should do and what you need to do. You know, that responsibility, what right. you feel like doing and what is more um, responsible. Mm-hmm. And Friday, July 21st, sun opposing Pluto retrograde. You know, I I originally titled this work with and through um, because, you know, the plan that we had yesterday with that Mars opposing Saturn, by the time we get to Friday here, we have to work with that energy. We have to work through it. Mm -hmm. Um, Think of everyone. And if you can't work toward a massive agreement, don't go, you know, don't go solo. This is not a time to move uh, by yourself, you know, get a, get a, uh, a, 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 an alliance Some support yeah um but i also have been on the lookout and watching this oppenheimer movie that's about to drop and it's dropping on this day hmm. friday the 21st 
And this, and it, you know, Oppenheimer is the scientist, uh, the um, Australian, um, Austrian, Austrian mm-hmm. scientist who the United States government hired to build the nuclear bomb. Right. And to his chagrin and to a lot of other people, he did in Los Alamos, uh, New Mexico, as a hidden project called the Manhattan Project. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the day that it's being released. It's a three-hour movie. Wow. I already have my tickets. Oh, wow. uh, Because it is the first time on big screen that this whole story will be told. And, and I'm sure it wasn't really dictated too much in the history books of schools, right? Right. Because there was so much negativity around it. Right. Uh, so all, some of the secretiveness and that was going on. but And the destruction, too. Yeah. And it's the sun. And really, when I looked at this, I'm like, oh, my God. When I looked at the astrology of the day, I'm like, oh, my God. Do you think that they had an astrologer to set the... It's interesting because sun opposing Pluto retrograde. Pluto retrograde it or Pluto rules those nu- nuclear bombs really big yeah. massive like destruction yeah and then retrograde kind of like the history of it returning. right returning to it but then sun opposing it sun is shining a really big spotlight on it yeah. even in the movies you know where those little like m- not like marquee yeah those, what are those, those like the big winding spotlights that just shine into the clouds yeah yeah um the, the Batman ones, but just for like, you know, big openings mm-hmm. for movies. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, I agree it's, with you. it's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this high energy because Pluto was was discovered shortly, shortly around this time as well. So Pluto is not even 100 years old yet. Mm-hmm. Neither is the the, the atomic bomb. Mm-hmm. So really, really interesting. Really interesting. So I'm uh, like I said, go to the movie and watch this and see if you can get there Friday on the 21st. That'll be a great way to honor Pluto is to watch his uh, his his beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I have a personal connection to that as well um, because my aunt was one of his secretaries. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. Yeah. So I've been in his office Yikes. before it was... Before you could, I mean, I've been in his house before you it, you couldn't go in the house. Cause I was 16 when I went out there to visit my aunt and we went to Los Alamos. Um, yeah, And sense. she took us through. And then my cousin, her son worked at the lab, right? In the nuclear, in the nuclear section. So I have personal family history there. So, which is one reason I'm going to Cincinnati and taking my brother and my mom because yeah. we all have this knowledge. So, yeah. Anyway. So Saturday, July 22nd, Venus stations retrograde. Venus stations retrograde at 28 degrees, Leo. And she's going to sit here for a few days. And really, she's retracing. She's going backwards. The R-E word for Venus, love, relationship, um, art, craftiness, beauty, your personal appearance. Um and it's in Leo. So, you know, you're retracing over your leadership qualities. There's a review or a reigniting of the latent qualities in that area of your chart. Um, she's going back to 12 degrees of Leo. So we're going to really want to watch other fixed areas in the chart because any of the fixed areas, which would be, you know, squares and opposition, you're going to get an opposition. The opposition of Leo is Aquarius. So any planets in anyone's Aquarius area from 12 to 28 will get an opposition. But it's, again, it's Venus. You know, she's the she's the, the love and value, esteemed, self-valued worth planet. So you'll just be going through maybe some re, rediscoveries in your relationship or how you love or how you receive or how mm-hmm. you perceive. You're also going to pay attention to Uh, Let me finish the squares. The squares of Leo or any of the fixed, which would be Taurus or Scorpio. So any Taurus, Scorpio uh, planets that are between that that 12 and 28 will be squared. Again, these are your times to figure out some way to adjust Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a relationship or a a, a commitment, um, intimate or friendly. Mm-hmm. or work right, right, right. in anything um 
I just wanted to say that the, um, I forgot what I was going to say, but I am holding, you know, we, I do a, we do a Venus star point, um, talisman making ceremony. It's not on this day. We are waiting for the, I've, I've claimed it for the Venus Kazimi, the sun, which is this August 13th day. So check that out. We'll talk about that on the upcoming stuff. But uh, now that she's going retrograde for 40 days and 40 nights, uh, take a look at, oh, here's what I was going to say. Uh, watch for any people, phone calls, text messages, information that will be coming back to you from this same time period eight years ago. Mm -hmm. So that would right. be like June, July, August of 2015, if you can remember back that far. <laughs> uh, who were you with? Who were you dealing with? What was the scenario? And is something like that, maybe that person's coming back or you're reaching out to that person? Or the scenario kind of has a similar... There's a cyclical uh, remembrance of that time period so um you know pay attention to that i'm 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 i haven't i haven't come up with that yet right but pay attention to that and same day july 22nd saturday sun ingress leo yeah happy birthday leos this happy is birthday, eight, leos. 8 50 p.m central you know and this is fire fix this just is telling us this is the middle of summer so it's hot 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 um so you know, what a party you Leos can have. Mm -hmm. Be dramatic and wear big hair and big gold jewelry and uh, make and a statement. Roar. Go yeah. out and dress up and do a big karaoke party. Sounds perfect. Big performance entertainment on stage in front of everyone and kind of being the leader. So let's move into the last transit of the week, which is Sunday, July 23rd. Mercury square Uranus retrograde. Uh, scattered question mark, you know, probably this is, this is Mercury, you know, Mercury squaring again. There's a something here to do, there's some sort of uh active uh role, role that may need to be played with uh, this squaring Uranus. It's like a sonic loud message, right? It's like boom, uh, like a big uh, loud, right? Um that you might need to unscramble, you know, it's like trying to figure out any of those little brain teasers that, you know, you have to figure out, find the words in this big and scramble that or Sudoku or something. It's, it seems to be something like that, that these messages coming in really fast and quick need to be put into, maybe you have to put it into a, a GPT, uh, uh, AI, AI, chatbot. um, um, summary mm. so you can just start talking and like throwing these things like you do spaghetti on a wall and kind of see what sticks mm -hmm. right it's mm -hmm. kind of like that so big week and i even think that we could talk a little bit about the oppenheimer movie or at least the history in our house i think that that could be an a little interesting story that we can discuss so but before we do let's head over to talisman times where you have finished up three talismans and since we discussed them last week we'll just go over them briefly the first one to grow with and in friendships i own a positive attitude when in the presence of my group of friends this feeling continues to flow even when we are not together our connection lasts mm-hmm and like i said last week that connection that's lasting just really proves that it is a really true friendship because when you can like think about that moment that you had and smile that connection's even still there you know and, and the intention is to grow with mm -hmm. and in so you're mm -hmm. growing and so you know you're taking it beyond just the boundaries of being together on a phone call or you know you're feeling that camaraderie when you're going to work or you know, heading heading in a different direction for a period of time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's that's actually nice, even in a relationship. You know, in a new relationship. Yeah. Right. So, when we say friendships, it could be any kind of relationship. Right. Yeah. Um, the second talisman, July twelfth, to get out of debt. And I renamed this to erase debt. Mm. My focus is steady and brave. 
I attend to all important matters where my finances are concerned. I knock down my owed bills with excitement, knowing soon I am financially free. Yeah. Yeah, this is just to really focus on that coming out point. of the hole. Yeah. yeah. Coming out of the hole if you really need. You know, it means that you have income, but right. you're figuring out your expenses versus your income. Right. And what you're doing with that. Um, and I and and this is kind of an interesting talisman because there is an end point, mm-hmm. right? I mean, of, of course, the lessons that you learn, the financial lessons that you learn throughout that process can withstand even past that mm-hmm. and once you're out of debt. But I think um, this one is very pinpointed to reach the finish line. And I know several people right now that are focused on that one thing because some of these people that I'm talking about are, you know, between the 60 and 66 years of age. And they know that, you know, oh, here comes my late 60s, my 70s. Mm-hmm. And let me really be be f- free of any, you know, of my prime years, if I call that, mm-hmm. of any of those um you know, those credit card bills or my house payment, or, Mm -hmm. you know, I want to have more freedom as I move through my mature years. Um, I don't want to be doing as much. I don't, I won't have as much verve or, you know, power to wake up and keep plowing. Right. Especially if it's a job job and it's not a a career, Mm -hmm. you know, a passionate career. And then the third talisman, July 16th, to expand my social reach. My words and ideas are spreading far and wide. I am heard and others are responding in positive ways. Mm-hmm. So this this is a nice one for um, getting more social attention. Right. Yeah. And having a big dialogue. All right. So the upcoming talisman is happening Tuesday, July 18th. I will make a note here really quick for you listeners. This is a pre-sale talisman. So if you're hearing this early on Monday morning, you can go ahead, reach out to Sandy as soon as you can, and you can help guide the colors and that talisman. You can be there spiritually with Sandy as she's making the talisman. So this is to be exceptionally skilled. I maintain a daily practice on my physical fitness and my targeted talent. My th- my winning combination comes quickly. This is this this is the sun on the midheaven because you always have anytime you're doing fixed star talismanic work, you have to get this fixed star on either the on one of the angles, and so mm-hmm. that's either the ascendant or the midheaven. And this is the midheaven. It's on Procyon. Procyon is the little dog. You know, one and of that's Ar- a fixed star. And that's a fixed mm-hmm. star. And it's one of Orion's dogs, right? His his hunting buddies, mm-hmm. his protectors, if you will. But this is the little the little dog. And the little dog uh, comes up in the sky. Procyon comes up in the sky, you know, in the evening, right before the big dog, which is Sirius. And so the Procyon is kind of the announcer. This little dog is kind of the announcer of the bigger dog and the mm. bigger, brighter star the serious star. So this is why we're using the words, my winning combination comes quickly mm-hmm. because it's, it, 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 it means that there's a heralding of, of goodness coming quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the talisman of the month for July is to be fair in all negotiations. If you click that link in the description, in the show notes, you will be transported over to the website and you can check it out there. On the horizon, we Again, I've finished up our July forecast. We're pretty much halfway through the month as of yet. But also that forecast and the printable cheat sheet is ready and waiting for you at patreon.com. Head over there now. And we also have a special announcement about a beautiful scent (laughs) of Balinese herbs and flowers and it is what's called bali in a bottle it is a perfume roll-on it's about 10 milliliters and it is exquisite and the smell every single time that somebody either smells it it's all you need is a little tiny bit so it goes a very long way and it's a beautiful scent i don't know how we can explain it too much more other than it smells just like bali and bali is just like 
tropical and frangy pangy lang mm-hmm. lang gardenia it's all of this literally mixed into a tropical breeze could yeah can't get any better <laughs> um but we do we we got those over from bali they are available now on our website again that link is in the show notes along with the august 13th date is a very special date because this is the venus star point day this is the way this is the day that venus is going to be making a transit with the sun and in leo of course because the sun is in leo as we know by this point and the venus star point is a very powerful position where we can lead from a pure heart Mm -hmm. that's that leo added in there but Even more special than all of that, we have Ariel Gutman, who is the teacher of the Venus Star Point. She is going to be there as our special guest in this Talisman webinar. It's going to be about two and a half hours. You're going to get tons of information that Sandy and Ariel are putting together together, putting together together as a team (laughs) (laughs) and um, as well as a talisman. Sandy is going to be making you and everyone there a talisman either earring or charm up to you you call the affirmation and it is a wonderful workshop if you want to be a part of it yeah we we do this every venus star point and each venus star point changes the sign right Mm -hmm. because there's only five five pointed star so there's only five places in the chart that it will constantly go retrace back over 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 at over an eight-year cycle so you'll learn all about this yes yeah and don't forget it is our last call for the 2023 greece retreat that is on amargos island september 7th through the 14th we do have one spot left one beautiful room that overlooks this beautiful bay of amargos and I haven't been there yet. I am I dying have. to go. I'm going back. Um, and I just can't wait to just be witness to the culture, to the breeze, to the the sound of what Greece is. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be an amazing retreat where we are going to be diving into your mythical story. Mm-hmm. What is it? And what how, are they? What are they? <laughs> and how can we utilize these Mm -hmm. these wonderful because myths have so much meaning have so much purpose Mm -hmm. and they are timeless Mm -hmm. so how can we really every culture uses these every Mm -hmm. every location from you know the the babylonians to the egyptians to the hellenistic romans all use (laughs) these myths that have create a storyline and some of those stories are in your natal chart Right. And, and we can learn you, lessons depending on from when them. Where you were born. You already know, like you would already be able to come up with a storyline, but for you to look up in the sky and see that, you know, you won't be able to see all, all the stars, uh, depending on um, this, the where the sun is in the sky, but you will be able to see some for sure. Right. It's going to be wonderful. Um, also, quick mentions is we have our 2024 Mexico retreat. That's January of 2024 we already have those spots filling up so if you are interested in mexico go ahead click those show notes we would love to have you there and also we have two parts for bali in 2024 either starting april 3rd or april 23rd and if you're interested in joining us for a retreat don't forget you can receive a free 15 minute call to ask sandy questions or just see if this is the right fit for you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So let's move into our house where I know I threw the Oppenheimer movie in here at the last minute, but I think that's really inf- interesting information um, before we get into your Garang girl story. <laughs> right. You know, I'm super excited. I have been to the Los Alamos Manhattan Project Museum. So have you. I have. I and I remember like that. Seven. And I guess I didn't even re- I didn't remember d- Okay, because I know my well, my great aunt, would you she yeah. be considered my great aunt was the secretary to Oppenheimer her, himself or one of them. And there were many. I well, mean, there were several. Okay. Yeah. And that would just be really interesting to know 
I know we can't know now, but how much did the secretaries know about what was going on? Mm hmm. I mean, that's just so it, it's... I mean, I'm going to... I feel like I need to hold my tongue. I know one particular story um, that she told. And... Um, uh, but but my cousin, you know, who's a little bit younger than me, actually, I'm, I want to reach out to him and have a deeper, longer conversation. I just saw him a couple months ago and, mm -hmm. and when I was in Santa Fe. And, you know, he still lives there. And he used to work at Los Alamos at the National Lab... Wow. Um, where his mother, right, where his mother, and he remembers going up to the Manhattan Project um, with his mom at, at sometimes because he was just a little kid. Wow. Um, uh, well, actually, he wasn't even born yet when, when she was working up there during the project, but then she continued up there doing some some something. That's what I want to find out. Um, so he, that's why he, it was, it was like, stomping grounds mm -hmm. right so you've been up to los alamos you remember going up to see the big the the little boy and the big the big boy and the and the big different um you want you can go into the museum and see the the replicas of the bombs that they built right they were right um and there was just always something that they were show you know you would read about it and then my cousin would say Okay, um, I think I'm going to just step out right now. So there was always some sort of mystery that hmm. kind of cloaked cloaked the this project, even to this day. Weird. Like I said, it's the first. Now, I did watch a BBC uh, rendition of Oppenheimer, and it was, you know, of course, actors. Uh, was not on the big screen? Mm -hmm. And it was like an hour, and it was just like an hour of him getting... Um, pelted with questions because was he a communist was he was he right. on the communist side was he some side? sort of like evil mastermind yeah and he going through this you'll see the trailer i've been watching the trailer because i'm so upset talk about pluto i'm, I'm obsessed i mean it's, with it's, there there is like you know this like strange direct well i wouldn't say direct connection but very close indirect connection mm -hmm. that you have with this extremely traumatic and extremely powerful event that can end the world you know, and it right? ended the you know the world the the war the the um one of the stories because you know downtown santa fe is really small and really awesome very you know eclectic yeah <laughs> and um very native and there's one area that is where the post office was mm -hmm. it's not there anymore it's now a uh uh shop where you can go buy wind chimes and things like a gift shop it's a gift shop yeah <laughs> and you the the idea that a car would pull up in front of the post office it was a street you know mm -hmm. it was a thoroughfare it wasn't a parking lot um you would go into the this door that said the post office and it was a post office mm -hmm. and you would show your uh, piece of mail or whatever you would show your um id and the person working there would know they were waiting for you whoa and then they would direct you to go out the back door where there was a parking lot it's part the parking lot's still there oh. I, I just walked through it the, the, that's the, crazy you know i was there in uh, december uh, when I was writing my astrology and I w walked there because we ate we the, right next door is a restaurant that we always eat at called The Shed. So these people would go into the post office and never come out the front, right? They were going out the back and getting driven up this, the back windy road to Los Alamos. Huh. And they had, you'll see the movie, please. But, you know, they the only way they could get these built brilliant geniuses and uh, Einstein was involved in this as well. He's in the movie. Oh, wow. And how to get these brilliant minds together, they knew they had to build these row. Mm, there weren't even really houses. They were, they're still there. Um, Shelters? Like dorm rooms. Mm. Uh, they're just long metal barracks. barracks so that they knew they had to bring the families in. 
so that they had a hospital there where, where you know, mothers were delivering babies and that, right. so there was a, a community. Like a, yeah, a base. They, they built a little, yeah, little village mm -hmm. um, so that the scientists weren't coming and going daily, right? Wow. That they lived there. Interesting. Um, and, you know, we went through the, the, um, the log, it's a big, big log cabin where they ate and his, the, the, the offices were upstairs and the typewriter was there and the chalkboard. My mm. God, it was like, so I'm really super excited wow. that this is coming out because I have a little bit of a memory of, of some of that. I mean, this was in the forties, so certainly I wasn't around, but, um, you know, anyway, we'll see. Right. We'll see. And to actually discuss what we were planning to discuss, <laughs> which is we brought home one of our favorite Balinese meals, and that is mi goreng, which there is two different styles. There's either nasi goreng, which nasi means rice, and then mi goreng is noodle. Mm. And goreng is goreng, and you're the goreng gal. So tell me a little oh bit. Oh, my more. gosh. So I had, I had Susanti. Uh, give me a cooking lesson out there mm -hmm. while I was there. And I took videos and I was writing down all the ingredients. And it's quite simple. I did bring home the spices that you have to have. So I have those with me. And then you just use cabbage and bok choy and and um, green onion and carrots and green peppers and slice everything up really thin and and saute it with coconut oil that's the key mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you do your noodles they're ramen noodles you do your noodles in another contain you know pan mm -hmm. and then you blend them together and put a fried egg over top yeah and I, then you add i don't know this. if you could hear that but that was my stomach rumbling <laughs> as we're making this discussion and you put this this what's like a a um again i got this in bali Bean paste. The is, bean. It sounds terrible, but it's this sweet, sweet soy bean. sauce. Yeah, it's so good. So good. And I made it last night. It's for almost like a molasses my nephew, at the same time. Um, and he had two helpings of it. My mom Delicious. loves it. Even my brother, who doesn't like a lot of things, ate it. And so, um, <laughs> yeah. And I, I like the, I like the mia green. I like the noodles better. Um, but yeah, I had it every breakfast, you know, you get most of the time you get free breakfasts at your villas in Bali and that's always, in fact, you'll see that on the menu everywhere you go. Yes. And, and shout it's out, at my house. Shout out to my favorite, which is nasi goreng, but I still like me goreng. Any goreng, I am a goreng girl as Don't you well. have a hat, a, a baseball hat? Yeah. My boyfriend has a nasi goreng baseball hat because <laughs> we are big, <laughs> big fans. So I think that's a wrap on today thank you everybody for listening thanks for um sending in your feedback remember we love to keep hearing from you so remember to email me alex at intentionbeads.com of course you can ask any questions there and we will see you all next week everybody bye everybody i say go do you now travel far share your stories and earn your scars it's you Say you are the one you will answer to when this life is done Don't waste a minute, jump in the river Wash yourself clean so you can deliver you The story of you, the story of you The story of you, the story